Hello. Can you guys hear me? Hello. So, can everyone hear me? Okay. So, you guys might be wondering who I, who am I, uh, and where is Alvaro? Uh, I'm. If you haven't seen one of our last videos, the gameplay video, my name is Thiago, and I'm the community manager for Loot Studios. Uh, I'm gonna be hosting the live stream today uh, because we have a we have a couple of special treats for you guys. Uh, Mar Marsha is going to be painting a uh, miniature as always. She's going to be painting the Cobalt Miner from uh, our latest bundle. And Alvaro is going to be sculpting something. Uh, he is going to start sculpting with the, his mouse, and in a couple of minutes, he's probably going to pick up the pace because uh, someone went to get his, uh, his drawing pad. Uh, but uh, before we, we go any further, uh, we have something very special coming for you guys. Uh, uh, we have a special treat com coming for everyone that... Uh, actually, let's... Alvaro, Marcia, do you guys want to say Yeah, you, we are here. I, I'm not <laughs> using the webcam, but I'm here in Thiago. I will be scooping... Uh, uh, being very very honest uh, guys we decided this new format of live uh, this uh, morning so uh, we thought that it would be really cool to have someone who knows how to talk about uh, dnd and characters like thiago he's a great uh, dungeon master uh, so he'll be doing this presentation uh, part of the live and i will do what i know which is sculpting. So, as he said, I, uh, I had a small issue with my pen tablet, but uh, I will be getting a new one in a few minutes, so I will be start sculpting very soon. Uh, and Master, like always, will be painting. Uh, and I, I really don't know what I will sculpt here. Of course, we have only two hours, so it won't be anything really special. But I try to scoop like a, a standard cobalt head or something like this. Uh, and please be patient because it's the first time we do this. And if this live uh, works well, we will keep doing lives similar to this. I, I feel more comfortable sculpting than talking. So. Yeah. Uh yeah, so this is just an experiment we're doing, guys. Uh, it was kind of impromptu, like Alvaro said. Uh, and we're going to test it out, see how uh, if it works, how we can improve it. So let us know. Uh, yeah, Jose is asking on chat, like, what should Alvaro sculpt? Nothing too hard, guys. It's like, <laughs> Please. It's like Alvaro said, we don't, we don't have that, that long. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself. Yep. Um, ahead, hi guys, um, I am Marcia and I'm, I'm a painter at Loot. And any doubt I will be painting and any doubt you have, you can ask Thiago and he um, talk to me and I will answer. Yeah, yeah, so please ask anything about our minis, about 3D sculpting or painting. Feel free. Yeah. Yeah, people are already giving suggestions in chat. People are saying uh, Alvaro should do a self-portrait. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, something beautiful, please. Or... <laughs> yeah, uh, the, next, uh, the, uh, the next one is also not... I don't think it's, it would be very good. Uh, they're saying you should sculpt, sculpt me as an <laughs> OC character. I think that's also very complicated and very scary. Maybe we should save that one for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of suggestions here, like a zombie snail, a now mirage. A, a now mirage, if I'm not not mistaken, it's like it's a little bunny. It's a little unicorn bunny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's, it wasn't a good idea to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the 
when Alvar is ready to sculpt, uh, like he's gonna, uh, he's probably checking chat as well. And when he's ready to sculpt, he's gonna tell us what he's what he has in store for us. So, uh, next order of business, uh, I'm gonna move on to. Before we start talking about the the bundle, we have a, sur a surprise for you guys. Uh, for every single loot subscriber, uh, you're gonna get a little something extra this month. Uh, you guys keep asking us to do more NPCs and to expand our tavern line, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So this month we're going to release uh, the Welcome Pack 2.0, and you you should uh, keep an eye on our on our social media and on on our communities. We're gonna be posting more about that uh, uh, this month uh, as the as the weekend month goes on. But I have a couple of miniatures here that will be on this Welcome Back 2.0. Uh, and to start off, I'd like to show you the, the Tavern's Cook. Let's, let's see if I can get into, into focus. Look, look at this. Look at that, at that turkey. <laughs> yeah. So this is the cook from the tavern. Every tavern needs one. And this one is probably also the bouncer. He can uh, whack some people with those, uh, with that roller there. And I don't know if you can see it in the base. There's just the detail of a little mouse eating a bit of cheese there. Let's see if it focus. Yeah, like right there. There's a little mouse eating a bit of cheese. I think we have some amazing miniatures in this Welcome Back to 2.0, guys. Moving on, uh, every tavern needs their barmaids. And let's see if it focuses. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. She has beer on tap always. She carries it around. Yeah. Yeah, existing subscribers get it. Everyone that is a loot subscriber get, gets it. This is an improvement of our current welcome pack. So uh, you guys keep asking for more NPCs and, and more like town characters. And if, like maybe we don't have to, maybe the, the bundles are not a good place to, like they don't fit the bundle exactly, but they certainly do fit the, our welcome pack. So that's what we're doing. We're updating it. And everyone gets it. Everyone who's a loot subscriber gets it. Uh, we have another character here to show you guys. It's the, it's the tavern cleaner or keeper. He's, yes, he's, he's a bit of a, has a bit of a pirate team going on. And has his little monkey. He's mopping the floor. Really great stuff. The sword is actually quite sharp. I, I actually poked myself with it a couple of seconds ago. And finally, but not least, every tavern needs a drunkard. And that's what we have here, a little, uh, a little uh, halfling drunkard. This one is Look really cool that. because he's not attached to the base, so we can place him on top of tables and make a really cool scene. Yep. Like, everyone who likes uh, to use our minis to make dioramas is probably going to have a blast with this. And it's not only characters, we also have a couple of more uh, terrain pieces. Uh, and I'm really excited about this one. We have a dog. Ooh, <laughs> that one's going to be great. Uh, and so, uh, pay attention to our, our social media and our communities, both on Facebook and on Discord, because we're going to be posting uh, more spoilers for Welcome Pack 2.0, and we're going to release it later this month. Yeah, that's like yeah. Some people are, are saying the the drunkard is going to be third character mod model. I, I think it works, man. It works perfectly perfectly for a character model. Uh, maybe a uh, Maybe a drunken master monk 
Yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay, so moving on now. Uh, let's start talking about uh, the bundle, this month's bundle. It's live now. You can, uh, if you are subscribed to Loot, you can go and download it. Uh, and I'm going to go over some of the stuff we have uh, in the, it's another trap bundle, or July bundle. And for starters, uh, I'm going to go over, over the, the magazine we have for this month. And here you're going to be able to find uh, the, or a little adventure path explaining the, the lore. You're going to be able to fi find like a couple of, uh, a bit of lore on the creatures of the bundle. Uh, a couple of uh, DMT tips, uh, and also our encounter guides, so you can uh, use the minis to play your game. Uh, I believe someone's asking. I believe uh, Alvaro sculpted it in ZBrush, ZBrush right? Yeah. Alvaro? in the software called ZBrush. Okay, S and. Yeah, that, that's it. Like, we have some uh, amazing content, like, for everyone who likes to play or just likes to know more about the lore and, and history of the bundle. We're starting a new adventure, like, with three brand new heroes. And the, the, the story of this adventure is going to go on until the end of the year, until December. So it's another six months adventure that we're starting. Uh, the, last, the last one closed out, out last month uh, with, with the Of Brains and Tentacles bundle. And we, if you haven't seen it yet, we have it on our YouTube channel, a little one-shot adventure I did with the guys here at Loot to, to close out that, uh, that adventure in style. Um, I'm going to go over some, some of the minis now. Uh, let me put this away. And to start off, I'm going to go over our heroes, right? So. First off, we have uh, so oh, we have our heroes here, and first off, we have our champion of volcanoes. And I'm gonna show, first show the the bust. Let's see if I can get it into focus here. There we go. I think this is an incredible sculpt, that, and like you can really see the detail on this, the scales on the skin of this guy. And the this champion is a he's a draconic uh, bloodline sorcerer, and sor sorcerers are like they have magic in, uh, that comes from inside of them, that comes from their bloodline. And uh, one of the most magic bloodlines that you can have is if you have a uh, a dragon grandparent or great grandparent, and their magic literally flows through your blood, and that's what we have here. Let's focus. Yeah. So this is our champion. I think this is amazing. Uh, could you, Alvar? Could you tell us who sculpted it? I this don't one was sculpted by Leandro Pavanelli, the one the that Pavanelli. Yeah. Yeah. Did the interview in a video. So if you want to know more about him or his work. There's a very cool video, a very cool interview uh, that José did with him, and it's available on our channel. Yeah, Leandro Pavanelli is also uh, he's the one that sculpted last month's Alberto Siberus. He also sculpted uh, the Stick Experiment from the previous month. So he has sculpted some of of our uh, of your favorite works, guys. Uh, we also have a version, like a wingless version of the champion, just for you guys, like you guys were asking. Uh, sometimes, let's try to get it in focus. Yeah, it's not working too out this one. But it's a, it's a wingless version of the, of the champion. Uh, some of you guys were, were worried we wouldn't have one. Uh, but we know, like, uh, the, the wings don't work for everyone. So the, that's it for that guy. Uh, the, 
like I'm gonna show the bust again just because I really loved like the the details uh, we can get on the the busts, like the all the scales, the draconic scales that come off from his bloodline. It's, it's really amazing work. Like his hair goes up like like as if it was on fire. I think you guys can uh, some of the painters can have a, a lot of fun with this. And now, okay, so I'm gonna move on to our next one. Or, like, and it's kind of funny because in the bus, you, you like, just look at the bus, maybe you won't realize that he's a gnome. He is Brock Badger, the gnome barbarian. Let's try to focus him. Oh, we're having a little trouble getting it into focus. Yeah, maybe this is better. Yeah, so he's our gnome barbarian. His, he looks a little bit like Mr. T. Uh, and I think he's just awesome. Like, look at that. The pauldron, the... The bone pauldron, the skull pauldron. Let me get the the seventy five, and just to compare to, let's pick one here. He's roughly the. Just to compare to two, like our non or awesome non barbarian, and. Uh, gnomes have a special relationship with this bundle. Uh, we also have a couple of gnome NPCs, like you. Uh, if you've seen the, uh, if you've seen the concept art, you for the scenario objects and, and stuff like that. And for our NPCs, you notice that we have a, a couple of gnomes there as well. Uh, and the reason is gnomes and kobolds are like our mortal enemies. I don't think gnomes actually hate. Kobolds that much is kind of a one-sided rivalry. The kobolds really don't like gnomes for a bunch of lore reasons. Uh, and but this particular uh, gnome, he really doesn't like uh, kobolds. Uh, in fact, if you look here at the base, there's uh, there's a kobold uh, head that he just decapitated. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So. And the, the amount of detail on this one is incredible, guys. I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a symbol carved into the axe. Uh, who sculpted this one, Alvaro? This one who was sculpted, sculpted by Rafael Usui. Okay. Uh, if you go to our Discord uh, community, it, there's a pinned, po there's a pinned uh, poster on our Escort uh, Ask, uh, Get to Know Loot channels. And you can see like ev every single loot artist will be linked there and they are part of the community. If you have something you want to ask one of the artists, uh, drop a question there. Uh, they are really busy, but maybe they can answer. Uh, Thiago, uh, just, a, just a second. Yeah. Uh, I'm having really issues with my uh, pen tablet. And to fix it, I would need to, to restart my computer. And this w would uh, make the live go down. So, uh, as I'm using only the mouse, I will be sculpting some really simple objects. Like, uh, I'll try to make something for the tavern or something like this. Because I really can't use my, my pen. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to apologize for, like, we're having, we're having some technical difficulties on this one. But we're uh, we're testing it out. It's like it's a it's a prototype of a new style of live stream, and we have some ideas that for stuff that Alvaro can sculpt in the future. But uh, we're we're just decided to start off with something simple, like give ourselves some some wiggle room. Uh, next, and this one I've I I have been paying attention to the community on Facebook, and I know. There are a lot of people excited about this one. This one's Alexandra. Let's get it into focus. Yeah, here we go. Look at her. This is our 
paladin for this month. It is a paladin, right? Yeah, she check. was yeah. also sculpted by uh, Rafael Sui. And like always, uh, we try to make female character really badass. We don't want female characters showing their body. Uh, so you can see she's a really strong character. No, uh, yeah, she's no not showing her armor. body without any reason. <laughs> so he has a, she has a really heavy armor. Yeah. And also the sword, you can feel it's really heavy. He's, she's having a, like a hard time to... to yeah, she's to having a hard time. Carry. Yeah. Like, I personally love playing paladins. And, and like, I would play... Like, this would be my, uh, my character mini. Like, it's just so awesome. I'm going to yeah. focus again. Yeah. Look at her. I'm going to get the, the bust out now. I almost dropped a mini here. Uh, let's try. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. The details on the armor, like dragon scales or horns or something. Uh, this is really. This one's also really amazing. Like, I love a a, a, a like. Armor is always cool on my book, and like well functioning armor that also looks cool is always a plus. Uh, so these are our heroes. Do you guys want to see? Uh, uh, do you guys want to see any of the heroes again? I could show you real quick before moving on to the monsters. I'm gonna give it a second for chat to catch up. Yeah, I think I'm going to move on to the, to the creatures now, to the enemies. Uh, so, to start off, we have a couple of... Uh, yeah, to start off, we have a couple of, of, uh, of beasts here, before we get into the kobolds themselves. So, we have a, a black bear mini. And this is a classic one to put up. To put against your players like this particular bear has been shot a couple of times by kobolds he has like people have been trying to hunt him down bears are not particularly uh violent against humans until uh they tend to run away but if you hunt them down and they survive they're coming back with a vengeance and this bear like uh really doesn't like to share his cave with the kobolds uh and you you can read a a bit about our lore, but this is the bear that's like that the kobolds are having a bit of trouble with, uh, and after they tried to hunt him down a couple a couple of times, uh, yeah, but it, it didn't work, and uh, they're tired of losing uh, of losing kobolds. Uh, next one, we have a giant lizard, and this one's gonna make a an appearance again in a little bit. Look at it. Look at him. Let's see if I can get him to focus. Yeah. Look at him. Look at his face. Yeah. So this one is used by either kobolds or lizard folk as as kind of a pack mule or a uh, or a mount like a horse. And. Uh, we actually started with like uh, a sing a single uh, concept art that opened up to two creatures: the giant lizard, which I have right here, and uh, the monitor lizard, which I will show next. Do you want to talk about this process, Alvaro? How you guys chose to to do two lizards instead of just one? Yeah. So usually when we do a character mounted on a, an animal or something like this, like we did with the 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 hag in the Granny's Prophecy bundle. There was a hag riding a pig, and people were like, "Oh, please do the pig alone by by itself." So we decided to make just the pig. And when, once uh, we decided that there would be a, a giant lizard rider. We already decided, oh no, let's also do just the giant lizard. 
miniature because yeah. people will ask and we we in this case we didn't just remove the the lizard folk from from uh the giant lizard we did a uh, completely different sculpture so you have more variety in this one yeah yeah you can see it's the same type of lizard but they are not the same lizard right they're probably the same species or something but this one is like uh it's probably more well treated it's not as wild this uh the lone lizard here is probably like has been tamed for a while and since we're talking about this, uh, this is our lizard folk rider, uh, the giant lizard rider. And he's a lizard folk. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yes, if I had my face here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Uh, so he's a lizard folk. And he has, a, and he's probably like one of the scouts for the lizard folks. Uh, giant lizards are not particularly fast, uh, but uh, they are faster than they can. They can climb, and they are faster than the lizard folk are uh, on their feet. They're kind of like slow, slobbering creatures, but they can be roused to action by a, a lizard folk rider. Like he has to. This is not his shout. This is like a. This is like a, a shield that's on his back. I think. Uh, uh, let me get the, the the lone lizard folk. Let me move on to the lizard folk here. So here you can see a lizard folk, uh, not mounted this one, and he has this turtle back shield, this turtle shell shield. And I'm really sorry for those turtles, man. A lot of those turtles have to die to give uh, lizard folk their weapons. Yeah, so lizard folk are like uh, they're a reptilian species of, of, and they usually live in in swamps uh, or marshy land. Let me try to focus him. Yeah, they usually live in swamps or marshy land, and they're like they are cold blooded both lit uh, literally and figuratively. Uh, they don't feel emotions the same way uh, the same way like. Humans and elves and dwarves do like the the uh, the warm-blooded creatures do. They are much much more pragmatic about things. And yeah, like and liz lizard folk life is a harsh life, man. They uh, they do not mess around. They are usually good scouts and rangers. Like they know the terrain, and they are uh, and they make good trackers as well like they will hunt they will hunt your adventure party down in the marshland okay so i'm gonna move on now to the other creature we we're talking about the the monitor lizard and let me get him here where is he do i have him here oh uh, yeah i do have him here and the monitor lizard i i believe this this uh the art you guys are seeing on the character sheet, on the monster stat block, actually, uh, was the or original concept art, concept, concept art. And then it kind of became both the giant lizard and the monitor lizard. So the giant lizard is a large creature and is used by, as a mount by, a, a, by the lizard folk. This one, the monitor lizard, is more of like an attack dog. And like he's, he's used... The kobolds use him as a defense for uh, for their lair, for their caves, because they are kind of stealthy and they can they are kind of stealthy and they can uh, fit the tunnels. I love the the little swirl of the tail here, like it really gives me a bit of uh, Godzilla vibes, the, the frill in the back and the, the giant tail. tail uh, like the tail is about as long as the body of the creature. Do you, do you remember who sculpted this one, Alvaro? The monitor oh. lizard? Oh man, there are so many artists. I, I think this one was sculpted by Michel. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so we're we went through the beasts of the bundle now. Let's get into the meat of it. So, first off, I'm gonna show the boss of this bundle, and for such a a young creature, this one turns out to be like really cool. Look, so this is our red dragon wormling. I believe he was also sculpted by Leandro Provanelli, yeah. right, Alvaro? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and he's sitting atop his little treasure hoard, and, like, red dragons are not, like, they are a-holes, you guys. Like, even from birth. And dragons are born with the intelligence of, like, an average human. So, they are... Uh... <laughs> Uh, they are born with the intelligence of, of an average uh, human, and but they are born, especially like uh, the chromatic dragons, like the red, white, blue, uh, black, and green. They are born as malicious as they will have, uh, as they will ever be, right? There's just something like there's an avarice to them and, and a hubris to them, and this one like. And maybe if I show the back here, he's kind of chubby. He's, he is a baby dragon, but he's about as cute as a barn fire. Like you do not want to mess with this guy, especially if you are if you are a low level party. Uh, and and in, even inside the the little treasure chest, like there's a lot of detail. There's pearls. There's a chalice. There's a dagger there. Uh, there's a lot of details for you guys that like to paint to to work on. Uh, and I have his bust here. We also made a bust of him. Uh, where is it? Yeah. And the bust, you can see, like, he's licking his... Let's see if I can focus it. I got it to focus. Uh, like he's licking his teeth expectantly, like he wants to devour the party. Uh, and it almost feels like you can see like he's a small dragon, like his uh, his snout is not as long as you would expect like an adult uh, dragon to be. But you can see like this is gonna be a grow to become like a nasty creature. E except of course if the adventurers kill him uh, before he has a chance to grow up. Uh, so that's the boss of this bundle, and we're gonna move on now to, to, to our little uh, not so friendly kobolds. Oh, just a, just a cool yeah. uh, point yeah. is that the first dragon that we did was the Orgus the Tall, a green dragon, and yeah. this one was like a young adult dragon, uh, uh, a large creature. Because of that, we couldn't make the bust uh as the same proportions like we we had to make him smaller as a bust otherwise he wouldn't fit in the 3d printers but for this red dragon as he as he's a wormling a really small one the proportions are correct like if you put him side by side with the heroes he he looks uh like let correct me do that right let me do that right now like He's, he's not that big for a dragon, but you still would not want to face him. Like, you gotta remember, even uh, as a wormling, like, they can still spit fire, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you have anything else you want to say, Over? Uh, I'm sculpting a cheese. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> That's what you can do with a mouse. Let me check. Uh, Our is making cheese. Yeah, like chat realized. Uh, people are asking Mar Marcia, do you ever use uh, matte varnish? Mm, just in some cases. Uh, more in base. Um, in the bases when I wanna stone for example but i don't use too much 
banish, banish. But um, I don't play, so I think it, for players it is nice to protect. <laughs> if you're just yeah. going to going to paint and leave the miniature in the shelves, you don't need to vanish it, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh so moving on now, uh people are, are giving a couple of suggestions like uh to you Alvaro, like make a since you sculpted the cheese wheel with the piece of cheese missing, maybe do a the piece of cheese like on a plate or something. Yeah, then I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next miniature of the bundle. Uh let's go with the dire weasel, dire weasel rider. Uh where is that one here? Oh, it's right here. And cobalts, I'm gonna pick up another cobalt just so you guys can see the, the difference. So this is one of the cobalts I'm gonna talk about later. This is his size. This is his size compared to an adventurer, right? So he's a small creature. Like the adventurers shouldn't have any problem facing a, a single cobalt, right? Well, I almost lost a miniature there. Uh, well, this is a dire weasel rider, and even though, and this basically puts a, a cobalt uh, on an equal standing ground as an adventure, probably a little scarier. Like you do not want, to, like even uh, real life weasels, small weasels, uh, they can be pricks. The a giant weasel, I would not want to mess with. And you can see him. Let's try to get it into focus. Let's see if I can show you guys some more detail here. Oh, there we go. So the helmet he's using is actually made of uh, of another creature's skull, right? And you can see all this detail here. Yeah, as, as the kobolds and gnomes are like enemies, you will see some like the 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 hero, the gnome has some kobolds school on it and he's stepping on a kobolds uh, head and some yep. kobolds have like gnomes uh, schools on on the their arm or so we try to to tell uh use some details yeah. to to show this uh yeah we try to incorporate some we always try to incorporate some of the lore into the actual sculpt uh so like the the art communicates with the with the story and the game uh and i think like this one is a is is one of the the miniatures that i i think like changed very little from the the concept art i, I think the concept art for it was great and uh a lot of work goes into it but this this is awesome like the concept art was awesome, and it was translated very well into the sculpture. Uh, who who sculpted this one, Alvaro? This the one was sculpted by Iron. Breno. He's the with Breno. us since the beginning, since the Goblins, the first bundle. Yeah, he's a he's an, uh, an one of the original Luta artists then. Yeah, and for uh, the Cobalts, as they are really similar uh, to each other. We decided to make like a base. Uh, we in 3D we call we called it base mesh. It's like a reference, uh, a, a starting point for sculpting. And so Leandro Pavanelli sculpted this standard cobalt, and from this one, every other artist started sculpting each of each one of the cobalts. So they they are similar, like the, their hands, their their size, their proportions, but even so, we decided to make each one uh, an individual. So their faces are unique. We, uh, uh, when I see miniatures out there, most of them are the same character with a different pose and some different accessories. Just a little, uh, some small difference. But with loot, we try to make every character unique. So if you Notice all the cobalts, they have like a unique face, unique expressions. They're not just the same character posed in different ways. Yeah, like each of the cobalts is actually like really unique. 
uh, they're not just uh, the same character with a different skin like you would see in a video game or something. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Flying Kobold. And the Flying Kobolds in the lore, like, they appear like very rarely in a Kobold society. <laughs> uh, I keep looking at chat and, and there's... Uh, People are having fun. They're talking about the, the cheese over. Yeah, I, I would never expect that after 10 years sculpting, I would be sculpting a plate with a, a cheese. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so uh, this, is the this is the flying kobold, and uh, he like he's attached to the base by his tail. Uh, and this is one of uh, another one of those like vicious little kobolds, especially if your party is like low level. They don't have ways of uh, getting to flying creatures. Uh, this could be like a harasser, can attack your party and then fly up a, a cliff that they can't climb, uh, or they will take too long to climb. Like if he's in a, in a cave system, like kobolds tend to be. Uh, even then, his wings are like very useful because he can get to places uh, the player characters can't. Uh, and in the lore, they're like in D and D, like general lore, they're like uh, blessed with a little bit of the draconic blood where kobolds came from. Actually, maybe I should mention this: uh, kobolds in general uh, are considered like they are uh, little dragons, right? They are like uh, what, uh, and you can work that in the lore of your game. I usually tend to think of them like uh, of what's left when a, a dragon bleeds to, to death. Like maybe the kobolds sprout up out from his blood, like the first kobolds, something like that. They are definitely draconic and uh, have the draconic ancestry. Uh, so they're like a little bit different than the lizard folk. But they tend to work on the same, uh, they share a lot of the same uh, personality traits, right? So they're cold, they're, they're, they are cold, they are pragmatic, they are scavengers. Um, uh, and they're like, they're, they are really vicious, really, really vicious little creatures. Like you should not underestimate a band of, uh, a band of kobolds. Uh, Next up, we have uh, the Cobalt Arbalist. Let's get him into. Let's get him into focus here. So the Cobalts are small creatures, uh, are small uh, draconic creatures. That uh, they are not exactly uh, smart, but they are very crafty and resourceful. So they will scavenge for weapons from uh, weapons and like st st anything that someone may consider to be trash, they will scavenge it. They will take it and they will make it work again and they will create new things. Uh, and this is a kobold arbalist. Like kobolds can actually like create weapons. Uh, I think some of the first concept art uh, we we had him named that as a. Cobalt Archer, and we realized, wait, archers need to have bows, right? Is there another yeah. <laughs> word for a, for someone who has a, a crossbow? And you could call them like a crossbow man, but uh, it's it's a bit uh, of a complicated term for a for a little cobalt thing. Uh, let's see if I can focus it again. Oh, there we go. Focused. And you can really see it like he has his uh, his little has a dagger and his little uh, his boats here or his cross crossbow. And uh, this is one of the cobbles that we would use like hit and run ta tactics to hit your party. <laughs> uh, so next up we have the Cobalt Beast Strangler. Uh, let's see, where is he here? Let's let me find him real fast. Did he go missing? Oh, here you have him. So 
let's get him focused. Yeah, so a beast wrangler is a is a little kobold that they uh, that is specialized in taming other creatures, uh, and you ac can actually see in his base here the way he's pointing like the base is actually scratched off, maybe by one of the giant lizards, uh, and he has his little uh, tamed tame lizard lizard pet here, and the way I like to think about it like. Cope, like his tail is bitten off by some by something, like he probably doesn't have a a, a large uh, a long lifespan ahead of him, even by kobold standards. Uh, kobolds don't tend to live very long. They could, but they tend to to die in kind of stu stupid and funny ways. And the way I like to think about it is like the the beast wranglers are the the ones like taking care of the, the kobolds, uh, giant lizards and monitor lizards, and like the dire weasel. And I would not want that job. I I think what happens is probably like, as soon as one of the, as a beast wrangler dies, they just pick a, pick another one of the kobolds and you're the beast wrangler now, go take care of the, the lizards. Uh, it's kind of like taking care of giant tigers. Like you don't want the, you don't want them to, your backyard. Yeah. And oh, t I really like his his little cap. Let's see if I can get it to to focus on his head here. Like his cap and you can actually see like the way the the sculpt was done. You can actually like see the the folds in the the letter. It's really cool. Uh and you can actually see like the wrinkles in the seven five millimeters. You can actually see the wrinkles on his neck. Like some lizards uh, will do that. If you look at a uh, like an iguana or something, they are not just scales. Like the scales, the the leather of their skins will like uh, bunch up and, and do wrinkles. I think it's really really cool. Uh, which artist did the the beast strangler Alvaro? Um. Man, this one I, I can't remember. Let me check. I will say just a second. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, that's fine. I, I should probably have had that open uh, beforehand. Uh, at, while we check, I'm going to go on to the, to the next one of the bundle. And it's actually the one Marcia. Mar oh, this thinking, one was right? sculpted by Yuri. Okay, so the Beast Wrangler was sculpted by, by Yuri. Uh, the, so the Cobalt Miner. Uh, Mars is painting him right now. Yeah. And the couple, so I don't have the 75 scope here to show you all to you guys. Because Mars has it. <laughs> yeah, Mars has it. Uh, so kobolds are like, kobolds are diggers. They are like natural diggers. I, I wouldn't say they are as good as, uh, as dwarves are. Like everyone knows that dwarves are good, uh, are good at, uh, at digging holes and mines and stuff. And mining uh, gemstones and precious metals, uh, but kobolds uh, are really good as well, and they can, they kind of have like this instinct to them as well uh, of good places to dig to find useful stuff. They are limited in what they can do because us usually they're working with like stolen stolen tools and broken tools, and you can actually uh, I believe you can actually see right in the. Uh, the shovel on the back of the of the cobalt miner is actually like cracked and uh, chipped away in some places, uh, and I think it's an, another like really dangerous uh, uh, cobalt profession, like just like the beast wrangler, uh, because they're they're probably the first ones to die when the tunnels start to collapse, and. Talking about collapsing tunnels, it's one of the cobalt strategies, actually. Like, usually when you go into a, a cobalt cave, there's like a man cave, which is usually small. It's usually like a size for small creatures because the cobalts don't need to, uh, the cobalts don't need that, uh, that big of tunnels. Uh, but sometimes to expand like larger cave systems, like the, the, that bear I showed earlier, 
uh, probably lived in that cave already, and then the kobolds arrived and started like uh, expanding the cave system. Uh, and they have this little competition going on. So when your heroes approach and enter a cave, uh, you can be sure there's always another like hidden tunnel somewhere. Oh, there's a there's there's a a, a good question here from uh, Hikaru. Does the the color scheme of a particular cobalt society match their dragon master color? Not necessarily. Like uh, you can usually think of cobalts. Uh, uh, I think like in the official D and D art, it's like uh, red and brown, reds and browns. Uh, but I would say like cobalts that live in a particular region can probably adapt to. Uh, they have like different patterns on their skin, on their uh, skins. Uh, it may be influenced by a, a, a dragon master or a dragon ancestor that they have. So any of the chromatic colors, uh, I, I think would be a cool, good color choice for Cobalt of the chromatic dragons, right? So uh, black, red, white, uh, green, and blue. Any, any one of those could work. And they have, uh, and cobalts do have like different patterns in their skin. They can be striped, just like iguanas and some reptiles. They can be striped or uh, kind of spotted. Uh, they don't have to be just one color. Yep. So let me move on to the next one. Yeah, something uh, cool to talk about the the looking of our cobalts is that. We try to make something a little different from uh, the cobalts you see uh, from D and D or other companies because uh, in D and I'm I'm not a big fan of how they look. They look like a little bit about uh, like dogs, a mix uh, a mixing of, of dogs and yeah. dragons and lizards, and I. I, I I'm not a big fan of their faces, so when we decided to yes, make they, uh, they they made them uh and fifth, fifth edition is especially, especially they made the cobalt's kind of scrawny, kind of thin, yeah, which are kind of like scrawny, ratty looking things. Yeah. Uh, so when uh, when we decided to make cobalt's, uh, we worked with James, our concept artist, and I asked him to make the cobalt's a little bit more like small dragons but with a stronger body like bigger hands yeah. bigger legs like they're more muscular but not only to look cool but also to to be uh less fragile as miniatures like they are stronger they, they won't break so easily as a 32 millimeters miniature yeah, I, I, some is, is is saying about the cobalt from Pathfinder, and I I, am, I I I like them. I think they look really cool. They look lo more like a salamander. I I'm not sure if how do you say in English, but they are they have like a bigger head, a thick neck, and I I like their their design. They are more inspiration for us than the cobalt from D and D. Yeah, uh, I I think the it's one of the the issues with like the cobalts uh, the cobalts in in D and D, and maybe they really work like uh, low low level monsters, but they're they're so ratty and so scrawny and so thin that if you want to use cobalts for something like uh, mid to higher level, it's like uh, it, they they don't pose a, a threat. They're not intimidating enough, uh, but. Uh, the ones we did, uh, I, I think they actually, uh, because they look a bit more intimidating and they look like they could be uh, something cool, I think they are actually like great options if you want to do a, a player character. Like the Cobalt Arbalest, I could definitely see uh, me playing a player character with this, with this mini, right? Like if you want to play a Cobalt, uh, or you even did a, a poll in YouTube asking about monstrous races, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, we, uh, like I asked, I asked about like if you guys wanted to play uh, to get some monster races uh, for heroes, and we're thinking about that for the future. But I think the the cobalts that we have, like several of them, work as uh, as playable characters. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, because and, they're not like the standard kobold. They have personality. So, it, yeah, yeah, I think it would be fun to play with them. Yep. And uh, I think a kobold was right up there with uh, with goblin. Goblin. Uh, people really want a, a goblin hero as well. Uh, and I actually saw on the Facebook community someone used one of our gnome heroes from the one of our last models to do a, a to do a goblin. And I think it turned out. Really oh yeah, really the well. lily. <laughs> the yeah, one he's shoes, lily. Yeah. yeah. When I thought when I first saw it, I was like, "Whoa, what happened to Lily? She's <laughs> green." <laughs> yeah, she she looks kind of sick, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, she's she's just a goblin. That's the color they're supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, so moving on next, uh, this is a uh, kobold shaman, and I'm actually going to talk about him and about the sorcerer, which is the next one I'm going to show. Yeah, let me get out of the way so the camera can focus. Uh, so the sorcerer, so the shamans here are more of like the uh, they are uh, magic casters, kobold magic users. And they, their magic, uh, their mag magic source is closer to divine magic. Uh, they are very rare in Kobold society because they have been separated from their the, their gods. They're kind of like a, a they kind of have been either forgotten by their, their gods or their gods have been trapped away. And so shamans are very rare, but they when they show up, they tend to be like leaders and guides for their tribes. And you can actually see, like Alvaro was talking about it, like this little skull here. Yeah, you can right. you can uh, imagine that it like a a small school, human school, but no, it's a, a gnome school. <laughs> the gnome skull, uh. yeah. And it has this little fire here, and like the details on his headdress. Let me try to focus it here. Yeah, the feathers like on his headrest the details are really amazing on the sculpts guys and you can see like their, their personality like most of them like look quite vicious looking right they look intimidating and if you have like a low level party going against kobolds you want your you want your the enemies to look intimidating and i think that has been accomplished here but i also think like i could use this miniature for a uh, to play uh, like a druid kobold or something like a player character it would also work really well for that uh the next one i'm going to talk about is like the, the more common even though they are still quite rare in a kobold tribe uh this is the kobold sorcerer let me change the sheet here as well this is the sorcerer, and you can see like this one is kind of like he has the the candles on his back. I think the artists are gonna have a lot of fun with the working with the candles uh, and the light sources. And like again on the staff, you have like the skull and the candle on top, and you can see like he has personality, like he has this hunchback, and uh, the he he's probably an older kobold. And sorcerers uh, are like, like I said before, when I was talking about the or hero for, for this bond or champion of volcanoes, uh, they have the the their magic doesn't come from study like a wizard, and isn't granted by a god like a cleric. Their magic comes from within, uh, and all kobolds have draconic ancestry, right? So why not have a a, a kobold sorcerer? Yeah, and this one's Zolder. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about him, Alvaro? Uh, yeah, this one was sculpted by Breno. And like you, you see, it's very similar to the concept art that James did. And I, I, I really like this one. As you said, uh, it would be... Uh, I'm not a painter. Masa can talk more about it. But I guess the painters will have a lot of fun painting the yeah. OSL, the, the, the fire from the candles. Yeah, the f yeah. yeah they're going to have a blast doing it. This. Yeah. 
a, a cool, <laughs> a funny thing that happened in this one was that originally uh, Breno sculpted this one without anything covering his parts. It was like naked below the, <laughs> the, the robe. And at the end, um, Pavanelli said to him, oh no, please, you have to put some something yeah, there. Yeah, put some pants so, on. Yeah, so <laughs> he, he has like these shorts. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, probably not. Like it's uh, even. Yeah, he's wearing shorts. He's not naked. Yeah. Uh, it would be kind of creepy if he, if he was. <laughs> <laughs> but good to know. Okay, uh, we're getting to. Okay, so next one is the Cobalt Spearman, and this is kind of like a a, a frontline unit for the Cobalts. You can use him as a uh, as a regular Cobalt, and it's really interesting. Like he's a kobold with a spear, and a, he's a frontline uh, frontline fighter. But there's so much characters. Just like like if you notice his base, there's there's a creature here, and maybe it's an armadillo, but it has horns. So yeah. What's the what's the story with that, Alvaro? So this came from Yuri's, Yuri's mind. I, d I had no idea what he was <laughs> thinking about. So, so the artist like created a little like uh, he wanted some some support for the for the mini, and he created this magical little creature. Yeah. Maybe we can maybe we can ask uh, Chat to to name this like this horned armadillo thing. Like what would be the name? Like uh, a horned ra rabbit is an almirage. What would be the name of a horned arm armadillo? Yeah, we have uh, concept artists doing the initial ideas for the minis, like you see on the the model, yep. the, the character sheets. But we also give some freedom to our 3D sculptors. They a lot of times have fun creating new details, uh, some some cool ideas that weren't on the the concept art, and this makes our minis even better. Yeah, like the you you have to give to some freedom to the artist, right? They gotta put so, something of themselves in the in the sculpt. I think yeah. that's I think that's really important uh, for what we do here at Loot. Like you can actually feel the, the that the artists really care about the sculpts and are really putting them they're all into it. Yeah, yeah. people are are giving some some ideas about the the names for it. Maybe you can read them out later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So the next one, uh, let me get him here, is the Trap Maker. And I really love this one. Because kobolds and traps go hand in hand. They're not going to face you head on, they're going to trap you. And you can see him like setting the trap here. Uh, it's kind of a bear trap thing. And like he's holding his head, like he has a headache, like Maybe his uh uh there's like the the thousand trap he has set this day. No, I uh, I, I think the the idea is that he's a little confused about how the trap works. Like yeah, <laughs> he like he didn't read the user manu manual for the the, the yeah, trap. He didn't, he's he like, oh, how this right? thing works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the trappers sometimes they the cobbles or scavengers sometimes they will create the traps, uh, but sometimes they will just find something in the uh, find something something in the woods and bring it back. Maybe th this very same trap killed another kobold and then he <laughs> disarmed it and brought it back, but he's not quite sure how to use it. Uh, but he has some stuff here, like has his tools, uh, and if you look here in his back, like there's a Let's try to get it focused. There's an axe, but there's also some uh, some sticks here, so he can set other traps, uh, maybe traps that he actually understands. There's a little pouch here with stuff that he can use, like maybe like maybe uh, some uh, poison. Yeah, and people are saying they want to use this one as a character. Yeah, I think it's a I, I think it's a valid thing, man. Like. 
don't let us tell you what to do with it. Just if you want this to be your player character, it's it's fine by us. Uh, yeah, and I think it's like just the the idea, like the the expression, like the the hand on the head. Like I think everyone's been there, right? Everyone has has had that moment, like, oh god, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, so that's a trapper. Okay, so moving on. Uh, I already showed you guys the lizard folks earlier. I'm gonna show them again, like really quickly. Uh, just if in case someone missed it earlier. So this like our basic lizard folk, and you can check the lore to to find out like how they found themselves in service of this, of the literal dragon of this bundle. Uh, and has the, the turtle uh, shell shield here that can also be used as a weapon, like that has this, the, the claws. Uh, he has this uh, half axe, half warp big thing. Like, they don't play around. They're going to kill you gruesomely, and then they're going to eat you. Lizard folk are not picky about what they eat. They eat anything that, anything that moves can be food basically. Uh, and here we have the uh, giant lizard rider, which is also lizard folk. He has his, his little, I uh, forgot the name of it, uh, his little scope here. And he's on the, the giant lizard. So again, really amazing sculpts, this one. And uh, the last creature for today is going to be, let me find him here, the Troglodyte. And this is like, this one is nasty. Uh, I really love that this Troglodyte has like a kind of a crocodilian face, right? And like he's really bulky and really scary. Uh, and let me get one of the, the minis here just so we can do a size comparison. Like he's still a, a medium creature, I believe, but like he's just on the edge of medium. Like if I had to bet on this fight, uh, I don't know if I would bet on Alexander. <laughs> and also uh, he's playing air guitar. <laughs> Some people were yeah, making jokes of it. <laughs> he's playing air guitar. Uh, I, I want to see like if, if some of you guys have uh, 3D sculpting skills. Uh, uh, I really want to see in our community if you guys want to like... I think it's really easy to place an air guitar on his hands. Uh, yeah, people are saying that that uh, troglodyte would make an awesome lycanthrope, like uh, maybe a were croc. Yeah. It would work. I would allow it on my on my game table. Uh, of course, to become a a, a croc, you need to fight a croc and survive, right? So, so troglodytes are like uh, they usually live they they live in caves as well. So all of these creatures uh, share an environment, and they are uh, underground dark hunters, and they have this terrible stench that, that will just like, they, they smell so bad that you'll be paralyzed and then they catch you. It's kind of how it works. Uh, their, their stench is unbearable. Even the other creatures that work with them sometimes, like keep them away and then call them when they are needed because they are just that repulsive. And this one, uh, it's... Uh, his bite, like, look, look at those teeth. Like, his bite would be uh, incredibly painful, right? Uh, which artist sculpted this one, Alvaro? Do you remember? This one was sculpted by Otavio. Otavio, great. He did the, okay. the Trap Maker as well. Oh, Otavio Liborio, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Again, people, if you want to leave a question to, for our artists, like join our join our Discord community, and then uh, there's a channel there just for that. It's, it's uh, the Ask Our Artists channel under the Get to Know Loot Loot uh, category, and you can like drop questions for us there. Uh, and uh, our artists, as I said, are very busy, but sometimes they they drop by and they look at the questions. And if they know the answer, they will answer it. Um, so uh, I'm going to move on now to the terrain pieces. Just so we, OK, I don't know if I have all of them here, but I definitely have the, the coolest ones. So this is the uh, cave entrance piece. It's probably like it has this shape of a dragon head. And like I said before, kobolds have draconic, draconic ancestry, and they see like true dragons, like chromatic dragons, as a as like demigods, right? And individual kobolds, maybe like a kobold village, uh, is a threat. But just a single kobold is so pathetic. It's just like just just little thing. Uh, that it. it you can see how they would face, like see a dragon and say, "Oh, that's like a god," and so they probably carved the entrance to look like the head of a of, of a dragon. If you print two of these one, you can place them on on the bookshelf, like holding the books. Yeah, it would be awesome. <laughs> like two book holders. Yeah. Yeah. I think it will work pretty well. Uh, probably, probably the solid version for that. Yeah, and a little bit weight, but it would work really well as book holders. You're, you're right. Uh, next up, we have, let's see here. Oh, we have the murder hole, and it's this little arch, and you can see there's a hole here, and it's what it's like the simplest trap like the kobolds will stand on top of this and then just drop rocks or drop uh or drop blades or drop anything on top of the heroes that are passing by and as you can see here like our gnome hero may be able to pass all right but our uh our human hero our human paladin hero would have a bit of trouble right Getting through it, should have to crouch down to pass. Oh, no, this this is the the seventy five millimeters, the, right? This the seventy five millimeters. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, all I, the I, objects I, are only in thirty two millimeters. Some people yeah, ask why right. we do that's this right. because I'm getting confused. Yeah, you, you, if we start doing objects as seventy five millimeters as well, uh, get yeah, some of them will get huge, and it's not <laughs> really easy to print them. Yeah, but it, like for a couple tunnel, I would actually kind of want to use uh, if uh, I want I was using like the 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 seventy five millimeters, I would maybe use the the thirty two millimeters for the tunnels because the couple tunnels are are supposed to be yeah like all cramped, so that could work as well. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, uh, so let's see the next one, the bridge. Uh, so the bridge here is another one, is another type of uh, cobalt trap, and it's it's just like one of this those rickety bridges, right? Like you see in, in uh, uh, adventure movies, like Indiana Jones, and you know, and like when your players, uh, you tell your players that there's a bridge like that, you know that that bridge is gonna fall really easily, right? And I believe. Yeah, here it comes off. And you have the that little Mortal Kombat death pit there. <laughs> uh it's another, it's another classic kobold trap. Like they make the bridges uh oh. just strong enough to support a kobold, and if anyone heavier uh comes along, they, they just fall right through. Um next up we have the the cage trap, and this is just like the a, a little. Uh, let me get it here. This is just like a little suspended cage uh, that would probably fit uh, a gnome, 
or something, or another little creature, another little creature that the kobolds could torment, right? Uh, next up, we have the... Let's see here. Oh, the totem pole. I'm not going to give any spoilers, uh, but if you... Uh, there's, a, there's a kobold totem pole with, like, a dragon head, head on top. And I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but this is not just decoration. Uh, there's an action, uh, so you can check out the the lore of the bundle and the encounter guide and figure out what this does. Yeah, people are uh, are commenting on chat. They really like the objects of this bundle, uh, and we like them as well. I think they turn out great. Right, Alvaro? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of the, this, this cave look with traps. Uh, and I guess that you can do some... For the players, they are very useful, but you can uh, also do amazing uh, dioramas with yeah. the objects. The, the objects are... The objects, his months are, are absolutely perfect for dioramas, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see... Oh, we have here the the classic Rolling Stones, Rolling Stone trap. Rolling Stone, yeah. I was, when I decided to put this name, I was like, oh, can I use this name? But uh, I find out that it's an expression, right, from England, I guess. I, yeah. I thought it was just the band's name. <laughs> yeah. This is a classic, like, uh, Indiana Jones or Wile E. Coyote trap. I, I've seen people talking about the uh, the Coyote and Roadrunner on in the chat. Yeah, I can see I <laughs> already a diorama with a kobold on top of it and a, an adventurer passing through on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, let's see here. We have a couple of smaller traps. I don't think I have them here, actually. Uh, there's the... Uh, deadfall trap, uh, which which has a little bit of cheese underneath it, uh, and uh, we have a cobalt's nest as an object as well. Maybe and, they uh, stole the cheese from the tavern. There is a missing piece yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that there was a uh, there's the uh, treasure trolley as well and the gold mine. There's a couple more objects that are not traps. Uh, but they like will really help you like round out your diorama or uh, round out like the the cobalt lair, right? And the lair of this little dragon. Uh, okay, and last but not least, uh, I I think people were really finding it funny when we oh, Josep brought me here to other traps. A couple of them are like really small. Uh, thank you. Uh, so here we have uh, the deadfall trap, which with a little bit of cheese on it. And uh, I think kobolds stink like humans really like cheese, or maybe they're they're just hunting rats or something. Uh, we also have the a little uh, a little gem cart, a little ore cart here. And as always, we have uh, is this one? Actually, uh, I'm gonna save this one because I'm not sure about it. So this. This is the cobalt nest with a little, uh, a couple of eggs and a couple. This a couple one can of... be really cruel. Cruel. <laughs> it reminds me of the goblin layer. <laughs> <Anime. laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oof, that's... Or you can take the the cobalts home and teach them how Actually, to be like, nice. Like <laughs> my, my my first five e adventure, like. And our DM hated us so much because of this. And if you play D and D, you've been in this situation, right? There's like this, just some little pathetic creature somewhere that you find and you fight, and uh, you're supposed to kill. But instead, 
you decide to make that creature your pet or a companion, right? And our, uh, and the first one I got on my first uh, five year adventure, which was Tyranny of Dragons, we had like to we found like uh, we let this kobold live, and his name was Onid, and he was awesome. But uh, our GM hated it because she she had come up with this like really shrill voice for him. And we were supposed to have killed him, so she wasn't supposed to do it anymore. <laughs> and then, she, yeah, and then we decided to let him live and bring him along with us on, on the on the adventure. And then she had to keep doing the voice. And we like we had so many ally traps. We had like we had bandits. I had a, a an actual shrub. I had a plant. It was a blast, man. And she had the, the voices for all of them. <laughs> like it was great. Uh. Let me see. I'm missing. Oh, here it is. Uh, so last but not least for the miniatures, uh, I'm going to show now the... This is a couple, a couple of... Uh, these are our NPCs for, the, for this bundle. So we have a couple of gnomes. And this one is uh, the trapped gnome in a cage, right? And kobolds hate gnomes. And like you can see, he's really, really miserable. Yeah, this one was all the objects and those NPCs were sculpted by Wendy. And this one was maybe the uh, about uh, talking about engineering. This one was the biggest challenge of the, of the bundle because with uh, at first it looks simple, but uh, f the first challenge was to make a uh, uh, trapped uh, 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 gnome. But for removing the supports inside the cage was going to be a huge uh, challenge because you, we have to place supports on his arms and head and everywhere. But if you was going to remove the supports, it would be really hard. And to paint as well, because painting a uh, kobold inside the cage would be a huge challenge. It's like uh, those guys who like uh, create a ship, a wood ship inside a, a bottle. Uh, so we decided to make the front part, like the door of the cage, attach it to his hand, and the rest of the cage, they are a separate object. So you can place the, you can first print the gnome, paint it without any problem, and after you're done, you just glue it into the, the cage, and tell all your friends that you are a painting master. You could paint inside the cage. <laughs> yeah, that works. I, yeah, this. I think the sculpt, the sculpt work for such a small uh, piece is also like incredible here. Uh, you can really like see it, like the the emotion on his yeah. face. Yeah, you feel bad for him. Yeah, I actually feel like. That one still has a chance. Maybe the, the adventurers can get there and, and save him. But the next this one. <laughs> one, yeah, this is the just cruel. Yeah, like, like putting the 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 apple in his mouth. That that's <laughs> just that's just not a nice move, Alvaro. Come on. <laughs> oh, uh, and he actually moves. Like you can. Yeah, he's interactive. Him. You can rotate him. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, let me do it a little bit here. Yeah, like, poor gnome, man. Like, what if the gnomes do the, to the kobolds to deserve this? At least he, he's like, um, how do you say? They use ropes to, to attach him to the, 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 the stick. <laughs> oh, oh, let's not go there, Alvaro. Let's no, not go there. <laughs> the, yeah, there's some creatures. <laughs> Like the pig and the the or conspiracy bundle, he had a, a worst death. <laughs> yeah, I think the uh, I think you've been watching a little bit too much Castlevania, Alvaro. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, so that's it for the the miniatures, I believe. I think that's all of them. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so now. We should move on to questions, right, Alvaro? Yeah, sure. Oh, just uh, okay. just some uh, before we start yeah. the the questions. Uh, like Thiago said in the beginning of the live, 
we are releasing this month new uh, characters and some objects for the tavern. So everyone will get them for free. Uh, maybe do you like uh, <laughs> doing yeah, the live I, I sculpted this uh, shelf with some uh, bottles and cheese. <laughs> uh, it's it was everything I could do with the mouse. But if you guys like this, oh, I think the live, yeah, the live, <laughs> the live stopped yeah. working. Just wait a second. É, vamos só esperar um pouco. Eu, eu ia falar para mostrar de novo a, as miniaturas do quem tiver perdido no começo. Eu vou mostrar de novo as do Welcome Pack 2.0. Uh -huh. Oh, are we back? Can you hear us? We're back. The internet here sucks so bad, guys. We are moving to a new office in a few months, and I, I, I hope there the internet is better. I will show very quickly here the the miniatures, some of the miniatures we have ready for the Welcome Pack 2.0 that will be coming in later this month. Uh, and we have the cook, we have the the cleaner, like the the mop guy. Uh, focus, focus. Yeah, there we go. And we let's show the drunkard as well. The half and drunk. This guy is having a party. So guys, if you like this shelf that I did, maybe we can uh, include it in the tavern. I guess it would be a, a cool object to have them there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, it ju just a, a cool update as well. Uh, as the tavern was the first uh, minis that we created for loot, uh, we didn't have much experience with supports. So uh, a lot of people uh, especially the ones who are using lychee for slicing their their minis are having some issues with the the 3D models. So because of that, we decided to take all the objects and uh, fix the 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 3D files. So we you don't have those holes and and um, problems with lychee. So uh, when, once we release the new tavern, uh, the all the objects are updated. You, they are better for 3D printing. And uh, I'll, as we are live, uh, and a lot of people are since the beginning of the live for more than one and a half hours, uh, let me show you a quick uh, spoiler. Thiago is showing the, the, some characters, but there will be this really cool object as well. I, I, I show it, it really quickly during the live. I'm not sure if someone noticed it. But there will be this tavern entrance. Uh, this one will be really cool to make some dioramas, like with the tavern keeper here, uh, some characters inside. So uh, yeah, just this quick uh, spoiler. Oh, there's there's another one as well, but this one I won't show you right now. <laughs> So Richard is asking uh, uh, Marcia something. Yeah, let me look at a chat here and get some some questions from chat. Um, I think someone asked, uh, "What's our favorite? What's our favorite mo monstrous race?" Maybe it was a question for the chat in general. But uh, uh, to me, I would have to say. Hmm. Favorite monstrous race? Whew. Personally, I'd have to say kobolds. Yeah, I, I like the draconic ancestry thing. Uh, let's see here. More questions from chat. Mm. You guys have any questions? Now's the time to post them. Uh, yeah, people keep keep asking over about the the painting handle. Oh yeah, the, the, this is a, a great news as well. 
we, uh, we already did the, the handle. We tested a new version. Uh, I'm not sure if Marcia can show it now, but the new handle, uh, you can place 32 millimeters uh, miniatures, uh, 75 millimeters miniatures, and uh, large miniatures as well. You can see I created a new, like, uh, I'm not sure how to say it, but there are new spaces to fit miniatures, so you can place uh, big miniatures, uh, large creatures, 75 millimeters, and bust as well. So the bust has a really different base, and now, as you can see, this small V-shaped uh, thing there, you can place the bust there. And uh, I also created this, uh, I will show you later more details about the handle, but I created like a, a base that stays on top of the table, and uh, while Here. you are painting... Oh, what? Sorry? Here, I, I show. Oh. Yeah, so if you, are printing, uh, if you are painting a big miniature and want to go to the bathroom, for example, you can just place the, the handle on top of this base and the miniature won't fall. So we did some tests and this, this current handle, uh, miniature handle, I think it's a really good design. And we will share it soon with the tavern. Please be patient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another question here uh, from Mudawat. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, so what inspires you, art you artists to make such badass lady minis? I just saw Alexandra Utgard and my lord, she's a badass. So what's the, the philosophy with lady miniatures, Al Alvaro? So yeah, I see female characters as male characters. They don't need to be like sexy or anything like this. I I think uh, a woman going to war, she wouldn't wear a bikini. She would wear armor. So uh, I I respect this art style. Some people like to sculpt or draw very sexy women with sexy armor and i i respect this but for it's not for my taste i i think uh i like it much more when female characters are badass and if i w was a woman and would play dnd &D or paint miniatures i wouldn't be very happy to to see all female characters like this like sexy uh i already saw a lot of videos talking about it and I, I I think the the more variety you have, the better. So it's okay to have miniatures with sexy female characters. But for me, uh, for loot, uh, we do this only when it makes sense. Like the Medusa miniature, uh, the Medusa mythology is about uh, seduction Nymph and nymphs. Yeah, the nymphs as well, like uh, we did in the the. Ghostly Odyssey bundle. We did some nymphs. The water, the, the fire nymph and the death nymph. And they are characters that use this uh, sexuality maybe for uh, making traps, attracting uh, men to kill them later. So it makes sense. Those characters, they need to be like this. But uh, uh, like this one... Uh, uh, a paladin or a cleric or a knight it, it does, doesn't make sense for me to to be different from a man so this is how i see things and this is why uh, how loot scooped uh, woman uh, woman miniatures and we get a lot of positive uh, feedback from it so the community really like those miniatures because they are different right most companies they when they scooped a woman, it's like the same way. And we decided to make something different. Yeah, I think variety is always good. And like even even me, like I said, I would play, I would choose to play Alex the the Alexander with this mini because I like Paladins and she just looks badass. And, and when I and when I want to play a character, I want a character to be badass. It doesn't matter if it's a 
male or female character. Yeah. I think I think like this uh is really good. It, like if it makes sense for the for the miniature and for the type of character that it is, it's fine. Just uh doing it uh the same way every time. I don't think it's uh all that great. Yeah. Uh I'm not seeing any more uh questions here. I, there's oh, there be a tree. Okay, so there's a couple more questions here. One for Ma Marcia. Uh, Marcia is about the kind of paints that you use. Uh, you use, uh, do you use Vallejo paints? Um, I, I use Vallejo and AK Interactive. AK Interactive is easier for me to buy. And uh, metallic paints, I love this KO75, both okay. acrylics. Okay, and of the Vallejo paints, do you use the premium airbrush Vallejo or the model colors Vallejo? Like what type? Um, model color. Model color, okay. So it, it was one of the questions. Uh, uh, someone's asking if we're gonna go uh, make a uh uh stat block for the six month loyalty reward to blind cyclops in the future uh and the answer is maybe uh i was thinking about doing something like that like going uh going back and looking at some of our uh of our older monsters and doing stat blocks for them as well uh but we're kind of looking ahead right now so we may like we need to do that kind of stuff for the future bundles and when we can slot in like time to do it, uh, I'll probably go back a and do something. Yeah, uh, a lot of people. Be... Uh, sorry, a lot of people ask us about uh, doing busts from the older uh, heroes, or they ask a lot of things because when loot first started, we did uh, very simple bundles, and with time we decided to make it more complete with busts, with maps and stat blocks. But uh, if we decide to update all the bundles every time we have an idea to improve our subscription, we will get like tons of work to do and the future bundles will delay or will be more simple. So I hope you guys can understand. We can't make everything from, from the past bundles. But yeah, making the, the stat block for the blind cyclops, I think is... Uh, a simple task yeah, think, and we can do it. Yes, yeah, I think it's doable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see what other questions we have here. Um, uh, yeah, they're asking if we're going to make this a weekly live event. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff to set up to set up uh, where it takes a lot of time. We there's other stuff we need to do. Uh, we are planning like other content that to provide to you guys on a, a more regular basis, but we we have to like scale up to that yet. Like we're not quite there yet. Uh, but keep an eye on our social media, especially our our Discord. There's going to be some really interesting stuff happening there soon. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, next one. Okay, uh, there's a question like, how do we do, do we choose the minis that are going to be in the bundle? Uh, the I think the pro process start with, starts with uh, Alvaro and Gribble or Loremaster, right? You guys like have a, a conversation and decide the like the themes of the bundles and like what monsters can go in there. Yeah. Am I right, Alvaro? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's kind of a, a, a interactive process, right? Like there's a team, and like we kind of connect the teams of the of the. It's actually like six teams of the of the six different bundles, and we especially now we, we've been we've been uh, hearing feedback from you guys. So it's been a while that you guys have wanted uh, like lower level enemies. So that's why we did uh, the cobots this time. And the enemies are probably going to go uh, up in uh, difficulty level as the bundles go, go on. 
And there's a, a team for each month that is decided, uh, and then there's a discussion about which monsters could go in a bundle. And a decision a decision is made basically uh, like, well, these monsters, these creatures would be interesting to do. This, uh, they would be uh, uh, interesting creatures to sculpt, uh, and our, our members would like them. So it's as much a, a technical decision, like the of the difficulty level and we need to have a boss and we need to have some lower level enemies and we need to have like uh some variety into enemies of the bundle and the, char the characters that go into them uh but it's also uh uh this uh decisions also made on on uh on an art sensitive side right sensitivity side right it, it, like the the creatures also need to be interesting to alvaro and the art team uh so yeah i, I guess that's it right over yeah Did yeah something? yeah that's right we decide to we, we think about the players so yeah. this is why we do this progression we start with low level miniatures like cobots and we go up 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 uh but we also think about the, the painters the artists the the aesthetics of things so we decide some some miniatures are Iconic, they are the players will like them, but they are very ugly. So some of them we decide, oh no, this won't be a good miniature, and we decide not to make it. But some miniatures we decide to change the the look of them completely. So we are we are not trying to do exactly like uh, D and D or other companies do. We decide to take. Uh, some creatures are inspiration and do our own version of them. So this is why we change a lot, uh, a little the cobalt's design and a, uh, the a lot of every miniature we do, we, we try to make something unique. And we we are also trying to create uh, new characters, characters that you won't see in D and D. Like for example, the last month we did the Dracuthulu. It, is, it isn't a character from D&D. We decided to, to create it and create a stat block for it. So players can use uh, it in their campaign. Like you did in the, the, the gameplay video, right? Uh, so you can expect... We, we are not going to forget about uh, classic miniatures, classic characters. But slowly we are trying to create new characters. This way we are expanding the D&D world, not being uh, like limited to it. Yeah, and, and eventually we're gonna like D&D uh, uh, &D is an, an inspiration, right? Uh, obviously, but eventually we're gonna uh, we're gonna run out of stuff like to parallel in D&D, so we're gonna have to come up for our own stuff, and we're just, like slowly ramping up to it, developing it. Uh, we're not gonna uh, leave like the classic uh, medieval fantasy behind, but we're, we're trying to do new stuff. Uh, someone asked, I think it was Sam, Sam West, I asked where we are from. Uh, Loot is from Brazil, and more specifically, we're from the third lar largest city in Brazil. Uh, it's Belo Horizonte, and uh, it's like it's it's like the the middle child that everyone forgot, right? There's Rio, there's São Paulo, and that's those are the ones you guys know out there. Uh, but we're from the third city, Belo Horizonte. Um, let's see here. Let's see, if we have anything else here? I think we're we're reaching the two hour mark, right? Yeah, almost there. Yeah. Oh, so one more question, and this is this one's for for Alvaro. Uh, the the unicorn potato asks, uh, did you ever scratch a bundle idea after development started uh, or or stopped it midway? Was there ever ever like a bundle idea that you guys uh, that we uh, thought we were gonna do, but for some reason it didn't work? Oh. No, it didn't happen so uh, yet. Um, we'll, <laughs> before we start scooping the, the bundle, we have to make sure it is the right uh, decision, the right idea. 
So uh, we do a lot of planning before we start sculpting. We start with like simple ideas. Uh, at first, we are we we were thinking just like one or two months ahead, but now we have plans until the end of the year, for example. So we already know each each theme that we are doing for each month, trying to make uh, a lot of variety, uh, cool miniatures, trying to make everyone happy. Like, uh, yeah, we we do a lot of planning so we don't have to to start things from scratch. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's a very interesting question here from New Hierarchy. Uh, do you have a dedicated loot employee who has to do all the supports, or does the artist of the model also have to apply the supports? Because it's not fun to add supports. <laughs> uh, do you want to take this one over, or should I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can explain. <laughs> okay. So we have a uh, we actually have a, a team of people that do the the supports. Uh, and Hiki and the rest of the he's actually on our Discord community as a as a three D printing wizard, uh, and he coordinates the team that uh, does our supports and finish up the the miniatures, uh, and then we test print the miniatures. Like it, it's a whole process, you guys, because we want to make sure that when we deliver the files to you, there's nothing wrong with the files that will cause a, a failed print right so maybe you have a failed print because your settings are not right or because there's a little there's a little something wrong but we're trying to like do some quality control here and then hike and the guys from the, our 3d printing team are the ones who do that uh, uh, and i think that's it did i miss something just, just a fun fact uh what uh before loot started in my mind I was like, oh, we don't, we don't need to hire some, someone to play supports. I can do it myself. So I, I thought that I would be like sculpting four characters a month and placing all the supports. And really soon I realized that it yeah. wouldn't be impossible. So today we have... Oh, the hubris. Yeah, hubris. we have four people for this and it's a lot of work for them. Some, some miniatures, big miniatures like the, the Hydra, the... The Dracothulu, they are so big for the 75 millimeters that they need some engineering to make the cuts and keys, plugs and everything to make it fit in regular sized miniature, uh, regular sized uh, printers. So this is a lot of work as well. And placing the supports in two scales, it's like uh, uh, a big challenge for us. I, I think most companies, they offer only one scale, right? Uh, and it's okay. But for loot, we decide, oh no, we will we, we'll do small miniatures for, for players and big miniatures for painters. So we have du double the, the job, right, to make the support. So we have a very dedicated team here. Uh, and like Thiago said, we make sure to print uh, every miniature we do since the, uh, until they are perfect. If we see a small issue with a support we will fix the support and print again so uh to make sure our, our files have no problems yeah someone actually asked me this on, uh, on discord a couple of days ago uh do you have time for uh, a couple more questions overall yeah yeah okay. sure okay so this one's for overall uh do you think uh, we can begin sculpting uh and this is muhammad riza yeah, Mohammed is always here with us. Uh, Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> can we begin sculpting with having a pen pad? Yeah. So I, I think you just you answered the question. In the yeah, last just you did. <laughs> yeah, you, you sculpted with a mouse. And his action is specifically like for uh, detail models. Like at which point do you have to transition to a pen pad, do you think, Alvaro? Yeah, so if you want to create objects like uh, like this shelf it's it's okay like you don't need that the pen tablet like i did right now just using the mouse but once you start sculpting very organic uh, uh models like characters heroes monsters it gets really hard to use the mouse because with the pen tablet you have more um control of what you are doing and also the the precious sensibility so if you just slightly press the, the pen tablet, 
it, it will be like a really soft brush stroke but if you put a lot of pressure it will be a, a much uh, stronger stroke uh, so yeah you can start if you want to start playing with sculpting go ahead and start with the mouse but once you you want to make uh, cool characters I highly recommend using a, a, a pen tablet and it's really cheap like I'm not sure how much it goes in other countries but here it's like a uh, hundred dollars maybe you can get a really good pen tablet already uh, okay one more question uh, I forgot who asked this one uh, but they said the uh, the Hex House is is a really cool uh, model. Do we plan on doing anything like that in the future again, like the the really big models? Yeah, th this Hex House it, it was a huge challenge for us because uh, our focus is to do miniatures and uh, like we said, we we print everything we do. So uh, because we do miniatures, our focus on, is on the the resin printers. Uh, but when we decided to make the Hex House, we make we did two versions of it: one for resin and one one for FDM. And one we uh, when we printed it using oh Jack Chan just appeared here <laughs> uh, when. Uh, we printed it using resin it was like 106 pieces i guess and we were having some issues with our printers the resin that we were using was not so good uh so it was a big challenge to to uh, print the whole house before the end of the month uh, it was like a big challenge and we learned a lot with it and it was a huge success people loved this house and yeah we, th we think about doing more big uh, scenery objects and houses and, and think castles in future but for now we are focusing on the miniatures but who knows in future if there's a there are a lot of people who want those big uh, houses we can start making them yeah uh the Unicorn Potato again asks, uh, do you plan on, on making more collabs with YouTubers? Uh, and I can answer that. We do have some collabs planned. Uh, I can't go into much de detail right now, but you can expect more uh, more videos in the future. Uh, let's see if there are any other interesting questions here. See if I if I've missed your questions, guys. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the Baba Yaga Hutz question was made by uh, Dwayne Hinton. Uh, I'd really like to see a Griffin. I would really like to see a Griffin. Uh, people are commenting. We do a bundle of devils and demons versus angels. Uh, I think this that's a uh, like. Uh, maybe right we we did a, a couple of uh we did a bundle on december of last year right alvaro which was yeah. like devil themed there yeah there are there are two bundles right the sh light in the shadows with some devils and there's the solar the, an angel uh and the the planet cruise bundle there are a lot of demons there yeah. It also, yeah. it also has uh, some things there. Yeah. Uh, so we have already done them, and I, I think we're gonna like try to avoid repeating ourselves too much. Yeah. But I think, but I think there's still some uh, uh, some room to explore those types of cre of creatures in the future, but we don't have any plans for them right now. Uh, it's... Yeah. Let's see. Uh... Have you, ever, have you ever thought about making your own race variants? Uh, yeah, that could be really cool. <laughs> yeah, that could that could be cool to do. Uh, but like some, I, I think people subscribe to loot for a, a number of different reasons, and one of the reasons people subscribe is to get like miniatures that they can use in the games they play. Uh, and if we were to do like, we would have to. Uh, to really think about it and really 
come up with some cool ideas and like really interesting minis because if we were to do something new something that no one has ever done before uh, we would have to create everything from scratch right the lore the stat blocks like everything it's not just uh, uh, the making a, a cool characters like it has to be something that people would actually be interested in using and painting and, and using in their dioramas right um, yeah, people are saying here would love a pirate ship. Uh, oh, there's a question here. Were you able to fix the print quality issue with your Mono X? Did we have a problem with the Mono X? Yeah, uh, I think we are were getting some failed prints uh, with it, mm -hmm. but uh, part of the the problem was the resin that we were using. Now it's better, and also our FEP. Uh, where film was like a little old, maybe, but now the the printer is working really well. Nice. Uh, people are saying here would love to see a pirate ship. I would love as well uh, to see a pirate ship from loot. I think our artists could do something amazing with a pirate ship. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of new questions here. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm looking for more questions or interesting comments here, guys. If you want to, to post a new question, uh, I'm looking it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think and, we can uh, yeah. end this live maybe for can, now. Yeah, maybe we can wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so everyone, this has been our, our launch live for uh, It's Another Trap or July bundle. Uh, I hope to see you guys print the hell out of this bundle and paint the hell, the hell out of it. Uh, and I post it, like send it to us on our Facebook and Discord communities. We're always check, checking them out and looking. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thanks a lot, guys, for your uh, for me here with us. Please comment uh, below if you like this new format of life, right? Like with sculpting and painting and and everything. Uh, it was the first time we did this, and it was a big challenge for us to make everything work. Uh, in the future, it will be get it will get better and better, and uh, Marcia is still painting the Cobalt, it's looking amazing. She will be finishing the, the painting job and posting later, right? And yeah, that's it. Do you want to say something, Marcia? Right. Um, thank you very much to stay here with us. And I don't know if you noticed it, but my hands today are shaking a lot, so <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, she was, she was not feeling so well today, but even so, she decided to paint the cobalt. But we will finish it soon, and we will post it on our Instagram. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I hope you have fun painting, uh, printing, painting our minis. Uh, soon, this month, soon we will we we'll release the new tavern with new characters. Uh, thanks a lot, Thiago, for. Uh, being part of this live, I hope you have fun uh, with everything yeah. he said. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. We will see you again, guys, in one month. Okay? So in the first day of the next month, let me see. Uh, oh no, the first day will be uh, a Sunday, maybe. Yeah. So yeah. maybe in August the 2nd will be in the new live, presenting you the new bundle. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot guys, and see thanks. you in the next one. Bye bye. See you, bye bye. See you. Bye.